So despite the fact that AIOs have almost become the standard when it comes to really hardcore gamer pooling over the past few years, only now am I, a tech YouTuber and PC hardware enthusiast, am I actually getting on the AIO hype train. And I'm getting on it with this thing. This is the EK 120mm AIO. And I think that this one is going to suit my PC rather well. We'll see. Hopefully. Anyway, let's install this thing and let me take you over exactly why this is the model I've gone for and what exactly really made it seem like the perfect choice for me. So while I prepare my PC for surgery over here, let me explain exactly why of all the AIOs out there, because the AIO market's pretty giant right now, why on earth did I go for a 120mm from EK specifically? Why not say a 240mm from Aorus, because then to match my Aorus motherboard, Aorus graphics card, Aorus NVMe. Well then, I went for the EK one for several reasons. Number one, it's EK, and they are pretty much the industry leaders when it comes to water cooling. So, you know, by that logic, their AOs should be pretty good as well. Secondly, despite that, it's still one of the cheaper 120mm options out there, costing just around 70 euros. And so for a high grade 120mm AIO, that's really not bad. So it's affordable, it's made by EK, so you know it's gonna be good, but also I think it's probably one of the better looking AIOs currently on the market. With a nice little crystal-like central block on the CPU, nice RGB fan, and the whole thing just looks really cool. Not over the top, but still just really nice. And I think it's gonna match my PC rather well. And I went for the 120mm unit specifically, is because, well, I can't really have a larger one. I mean, I could technically fit a 240mm here at the front of my case. Issue is that, well, my graphics card needs as much of airflow as possible. So pretty much the only option I had is to mount it here on the 120mm exhaust and out back. It's also gonna be very exciting for both me and you because I've never actually uh, I've never actually mounted an AIO before. So now that the PC is kind of ready for for st the surgery as I put it, let's actually unbox this thing. Okay, so I guess let's just open it up and see what on earth we get inside. This is looking nice and premium already. The issue is I have no idea how to actually open it up. Oh, there we go. There's another a little piece of tape here. That's why it's not allowing me to open it up. Here it is. Kind of. Okay, here it is. Oh boy. This is gonna be an adventure and a half. So here is all the accessories, here is a nice little EK 120mm fan, that looks like a really good fan. And I, this video is so cool for me for one more reason, and that is because, you know, I've seen so many tech YouTubers, let's be honest, tech YouTubers nowadays, they either use AIOs or they use Noctua air coolers. So it's really nice to finally get my hands on an AIO after so long. This is so cool looking. This whole crystal looking block here on the CPU is gonna look awesome. The rad. Oh, the rad? I'm kind of worried about spacing now that I look at it, but hopefully it's gonna be okay. And over here is our little baggie of accessories, which includes, I think I saw thermal paste. Yeah, we didn't get our own thermal paste, which is cool. I did have some um, Cooler Master stuff repaired, but I think I may go with this instead. We have ourselves a mounting bracket for a platform. I'm not sure what platform. I'm not sure what. Oh, uh, it doesn't have any mounting bracket, so I think it's. Like, that's actually probably the first thing we should figure out. How on earth do we install it on AMD platform? Because I am running a Ryzen 3700X. So we're gonna need ourselves this thing, the AMD bracket. I think I am gonna have to read the instructions so I don't mess something up here. Okay, so here's the Intel bracket. And if you are wondering, it does not support any any and all Intel and AMD sockets. But what I love about the box itself is just, it shows you how many different sockets Intel has compared to AMD. And for Intel, it lists like 10 different sockets. Well, for AMD, it just goes, yeah, it supports AM4. That's all you really need. Okay, instruction manual, hello there, sir. How on earth do I mount it all to a 
AMD AM4 CPU. Wait, so I don't even need the backplate for AM4? Is that what I'm supposed to be getting from this? So then, let's actually prepare everything. Okay, so first let's uninstall this cooler I have right now. And if you're wondering what I have right now, it's the called the Thermal Ride TY something or other. It's actually a really, really good cooler. It's good, it's silent. But I also wanted to go for something nicer. And I'll explain exactly why I decided to go for an AO instead of just sticking with a really good air cooler at the end of the video. So definitely stick to the end so, so you know exactly what my reasoning was for switching to an AIO. So now I'm wondering what on earth I have to do for the backplate <laughs> because I have not seen anything about it because I haven't seen any anything about the backplate for the AM4 part of the instructions. So which makes me kind of nervous. Okay, so here it is. Okay, so here is the thermal right um, backplate, which I can't keep here because I mean, no, I need it with this cooler. So what kind of backplate do I need for this? I assume I need some kind of backplate, right? Actually, it doesn't mention anything about um, anything about removing the bracket that came with your AM4 motherboard. So I wonder if you just keep that in. That would actually be annoying because I kind of need it. And just in case I'm going insane or something, this um, Intel one does not, no, it most certainly does not fit. <sighs> if I have to use my AM4 standard one, that's kind of a pain because I wanted to use that for another PC. No, what, whatever. Okay, this project's turning to a mess already because now I need to actually unscrew. I'm gonna just put it on here for now. This looks very dangerous, but at this point I don't care. I need to somehow remove because I put the AM4 cooler on my old AM3 Plus base um, FX machine. Uh, I need to figure out a way to uh, remove it. If I was able to put an AM4 cooler on an AM3 platform, then would I be able to use my original AM3, or sorry, AM3 Plus backplate, which I have here, on my AM4? I'm not sure if they're compatible like that, but it's worth a shot. It sits. Sometimes my genius, it's almost frightening. Okay, that's awesome. So I can use my old AM3 Plus backplate and I don't have to actually take up on my test bench. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, AMD, for making your stuff compatible like that. Oh boy, that would have been a nightmare and a half. Okay, let, let's prepare this. I don't know what to do with the rad itself. It Gonna, it's just gonna go on there for now. Um, cool. What on earth do I do? I need uh, these things which go on somehow. Ah! Okay, we have stuff flying into the motherboard socket area, which is never, never good. Ooh. Okay. Oh, oh no. Okay, there was thermal paste on this stuff. I have my finger on thermal paste. Okay, everything's going badly. Ah, this thing is actually a lot harder to work with than you actually imagine, just because it's like, you, you can work on these parts individually, but the issue is that because they're connected, you know, you have either the rad just like, um, being here, getting in the way, or if you want to work on a rad, you have the block getting in the way, so it's like, kind of annoying, but whatever. Do I just mount it now? Um, I need to mount it with a spring and a thumb nut. When on earth, where on earth are my springs and my thumb nuts? There they are. Okay, so now is also the main question of which way do we want this to go? Also, these cables are also getting in the way. Uh, yeah, so th this way the logo is correct. Cool, so it needs to go this way. There we go. These cables are so annoying. The rad can just go off here for now. And now it's time to mount it down with some springs and some thumb nuts. Now for the part I'm completely unsure of, and that's how it all goes together. So basically I'm doing what's scientifically known as uh, hoping for the best. And I think it's actually gonna, this actually way, uh, <laughs> way thicker than I imagined. This may actually cover up most of that cool little uh, Aorus thing going on here in the corner. Over here, where I got a VRM cooling and a rear I.O. and some RGB is. 
ah, screw. So now this will go over here. Okay, so it's not completely blocking out the block, but it's uh, getting close. So now we need these screws and they go in like so. I'm getting the hang of this. I gotta say, areas are a bit, they're probably the most um, daunting uh, cooling thing, and um, pardon, I guess, custom water cooling, but like, water cooling that's available to the common man, I'd say. AIOs are definitely the most daunting ones, but, I gotta say, once you get a hang of it, it's not the most complicated thing in the world. And I gotta say, it is looking pretty good so far, I mean, just look at this. But looks are one thing, actually getting good cooling and performance out of this, well, that's another question, which we're gonna find out in a second. Let me just cable manage this thing first. So, okay, so now for the fun part, I'm actually trying to cable manage all of this. And uh, I've read that you can uh, daisy chain. Yeah, you can daisy chain them like this. Yeah, you can daisy chain the water block and, the, and then the RGB fan itself. So you can daisy chain those. However, that would still mean I would be missing a RGB, an addressable RGB port, because on this motherboard I already have, I only have two, and they're all both being used up by RGB strips. So thankfully, I came prepared and brought this, an RGB splitter. So first off, let's start by sorting this out. And I know this isn't the cleanest cable management in the world out back here, I know. I don't care. Okay, so that's in. And now the rear fan header needs to go somewhere over um, here. And I think we're actually done here. So all that's left to do is to peel this logo. Oh yeah. Look at that. Now, to actually boot this up and see if it actually works. Oh boy, I'm winded from that. Okay, now let's hope that nothing explodes. Fan spinning. The fan on the finger spinning. We have RGB on the block. And I feel, I'm trying to feel if I can uh, feel the pump moving. I think it's moving, I think the pump's moving. I think we actually got a working AIO. Cool. Now if the, if we could actually get a signal to the monitor, which we aren't getting, then we'll be on a home run. I know why we aren't getting a signal, because I plugged in the wrong HDMI. I was going to my, uh, to my TV instead of going to, uh, to my monitor. There we go. And now we should get a signal, hopefully. Can we please have a signal? Yes, okay. You can't see it, but we do have a signal over there. Please? There we go, it's on, it's on, it's on. But now of course, we need to figure out if this was all worth it. So I did run a bit of a uh, Cinebench benchmark before, so you can see all my, all this stuff I don't care about, please go away. I know I don't have internet, but whatever. Ah, okay. No, Xbox, I don't care, please. And here we are, 38 degrees, 37 degrees at idle on um, hardware it, uh, monitor over here. That is awesome. But now let's actually see how on earth we perform in Cinebench. So we are running here Cinebench R23, CPU multi-core, let's go. Okay, and now for some, well that's running for some context because it's gonna take 10 minutes to run. Uh, what we need to beat is a score of 12,074 and at a, t at a temperature of 69 degrees, <laughs> nice. Um, at the time the benchmark finished. So for the Cinebench score, we have 12,093. So barely better than the original, but whatever. Like I said before, since I play games at 4K, I don't need the fastest possible CPU performance seeing how I'm fully GPU bound, even though I already have a 1080 Ti. And then for the temperatures, well, our final temperature was 66 degrees. So three degrees lower than with that cooler. So I would call that a win. But now for the question you've all been asking, if I had such a great cooler here already, why did I decide to go for an AIO? Well, there's several reasons. Number one is that, again, even if I don't need the best possible thermals for my CPU, I still like to have a nice quiet cooling system. And even though this was quiet enough, 
well, I hope that it could even go even quieter with an AIO. That also leads into my second point, that rear fan that came bundled, this thing that came bundled with my case, the Corsair 110R, that, that fan was so incredibly loud, I wanted to sw sw swap it out, and this gave me a perfect opportunity by just attaching an AIO out back there. The third reason is one that may not even come fully true, and that's actually to help improve airflow going to my graphics card. Because with a setup like this, the top of the two front fans that I have in my case, the CPU cooler would take a lot of that air from that front fan. But now that the CPU fan, so to speak, is just the rear exhaust fan, hopefully the graphics card, which is just the centerpiece of my PC, because again, I game at 4K and it's also 10 Ti, so it, it outputs a lot of heat. That thing needs as much airflow as possible. So now hopefully it's going to get more airflow from those two front fans because it's not fighting for that air with the CPU cooler. And also, since I am hoping to go for an RTX 3001, a high-end RTX 3000 cards, when those become available again, good airflow to the graphics card is very important in my case. And also, of course, it just looks better than this. So hopefully now you know exactly why I decided to go with this thing. And honestly, I'm loving this AIO. It is so good looking. It's definitely super quiet. Performance wise, not much better than this, but again, that's not really I that's not really what I was going for here. But yeah, I highly hope you liked this video. If you did, then maybe check out my Patreon. Because even one dollar a month goes a long way in helping out my channel. So I'd also love for my Patreons, Gavin Burns, LK Bean, Amy Sushi, Tiffany Jacobs, and Wolfie. Thank you all so so much. Down there in my video description, you can also find my Amazon associates links if you're planning to buy anything for Amazon, be it PC related or anything else, if you're planning to go in PC shopping or just do whatever then if you use our links, you don't pay anything extra, we get some money, so it's a win-win. Down is also my Discord, if you want to talk to me, or others about this, or whatever else, really. And that's about it, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in Wadamek next. Goodbye, everyone. Good. Bye.